for me, this is the most fun part about Mistweaver. Min maxing your healing, your healing modifiers, your mana modifiers, being able to do that, that, oh, I, I love, I literally love it so much. I got a Shwen proc. So that means I have a Nyusu proc here. I'm going to try to min max this, this Nyusu proc, by the way, here. I am going to manatee it short into a Yulon, Thunder Focus, Heat, Enveloping Mist. Everyone gets a shield here, Soothing Mist, keep healing. And this, this is this is it right here, baby. This is all of your healing that you can do, and I freaking love it. Just make sure you get Enveloping Mist out for an Enveloping Breath, and look at this healing. Look at this. I love it. I, I literally, I love Miss Weaver so much. Yo, what is going on, everybody? This is Mystical. Today, I am bringing you an arena slash solo shuffle guide for the War Within Season 1. Hopefully, this will answer any questions you have. The goal of this guide is to give you everything that you need to know about Miss Weaver and Arena. We I talk about everything that you need to know, rotation, cooldowns, talents, everything. I talk about tips and tricks in another video that will have linked in the description. If there's anything missing or if anything needs to get updated, I will put a pinned comment in the top of the comment section with any updated builds or anything like that. But this will hopefully be completely updated for at least the season one of The War Within. And I know what you're asking, why play a monk in arena when so many people have it rated as probably the worst healer in the game, and that's simply because it's fun. There's no other reason. I think there's a lot of ways that you can outplay people that a lot of people don't even know about, and I try to use that to my advantage. I love being able to beat meta specs as a, the worst healer in the game. It is my favorite thing to do. So if you just want to have fun and you want to play, I would say, the most fun healer in the game, I would say give Miss Weaver a shot. All right, and I want to start off with races. So we're going to start with the Alliance this time. I would say the number one pick that I would choose is Night Elf, mostly because of Shadow Meld. This allows you to drop combat and instantly start shrinking. If you're ever out of mana, it's really, really helpful. If you're not into Night Elf or you don't want to go for the drinks, that's fine too. I think Dwarf and Dark Iron Dwarf are very solid options. It looks like there's going to be a lot of specs like Assassin's Rogue and Affliction and Feral that have bleeds. And these two have racials that allow you to dispel bleeds curses anything like that so i also make gnome gnome is really solid again if balanced druid is, ever comes into meta you're able to dispel the root beam on you by yourself every minute they you just shut down the go on your own so if boomy's ever insane i would go gnome but just for overall i think night elf is the best race for alliance but you can still go dwarf dark iron dwarf gnome are all pretty solid options for the Horde side, there aren't too many options. I would say your best bet is to go Undead. Undead gives you Will of the Forsaken. That allows you to get out of Fears, Charms, Sleep Effects. So Warlocks, if they're meta, this is really good. Dragons, they'll be meta. So this is going to be really good. So anything like that, go Undead. Orc is another possibility. That's fine too. Just because of hardiness, you still get a little bit of Sun Reduction on yourself. Orc is always... A decent option i would say undead is is a really good option I, I think undead would be the best horde race outside of those two races there really aren't too many options i tried out the new earthen racial it's okay it's okay the damage is all right the gems the well fed is okay it's not amazing i do like their their animations though. i think they're sick All right, so you've made your monk and now you want to gear it. So we're going to start off with stats. I would say get to about 10% haste, 10, 11% haste, and then dump everything else in the verse mastery. The reason for that is because you need to reduce GCD on your soothing mist, which I will talk about later. But you need that you need that little bit of haste to with that global to help with your healing. And then outside that, your mastery healing is amazing. And I will talk about that as well. And that's what I would go for stats. Embellishments. There aren't that many embellishments in this expansion that I feel like are good for healers. I've only been testing one and I'll show you what it is. It's this one right here. It's this energy redistribution beacon. I use two of these. So while you're above 80% health, direct healing, you also do redistribute up to 2% of your healing. This actually isn't even my healing breakdown. This is my healing and <laughs> this is this is the uh embellishment right here so when you're above 80 percent health direct healing you do also redistribute just to two percent of your health to your target so i think this is good i stack two of them so i have them on two pieces of gear it works so that's what i've been using i think it's the best embellishment for healers going into the war within season one tier sets so there are tier sets in the war within we have our two set which makes enveloping mist and renew renewing mist healing increase by 10 percent, which is amazing i love those healing buffs to anything i love that and then our four set is vivify extends duration of renewing mist and develop mist on its primary target by three seconds up to three seconds i just want to make sure this is correct in pvp 
So yeah, this is the same as as it would be in PvP, which is really nice. And yeah, the only issue I have with the tier set is that the stats are absolutely terrible. It's sad how bad they are. Every single piece has crit except for the shoulders. So I've been running two set a lot. The four set I think is decent, but I don't think it's worth the stats. I, I really don't. So just to show you, the helm is crit verse. The chest is crit verse. The gloves are crit haste and the legs are crit haste. So it's just really just rough. So what I've been running is I go with the shoulders that are haste mastery. They're high mastery. And then I go with the gloves because they have high haste and crit sadly, which is a little unfortunate, but that's what I've been running. It's been working out really well. And then for the other offset pieces, I just go verse mastery or haste verse, depending on if which stat I need more. Next up are our talents, and there's three different trees I'm gonna talk through. So I'm gonna start with the left-hand side, right-hand side, and then here are talents. So starting with the left-hand side, there really isn't anything crazy going on with this build. I would say you're going for just he just healing. That's what you're gonna do as a caster mist You're just gonna heal. You do wanna go for the ancient arts to reduce the cooldown on your paralysis by 15 seconds, and the cooldown of your legs to about 10 seconds. I think this is important because we need those those CC setups. A vivacious vivification, so every 10 seconds, your next vivify becomes instant, and its healings increase by 20%. So it's this weak war right here. Boom, your, weak, your vivify is instant. I do want to note that it's every 10 seconds, not 10 seconds after you use it. So you can see right now, there's a vivify coming, and it's it doesn't matter when I use it. It's just every 10 seconds. You keep that in mind. You can get technically two instant vivifies in a row. I have all my weak wars in the description. Outside of that, you get your port. Shoot torpedo is really nice. Touch of death, which is great. Increase the range of legs to about four yards of tiger tail sweep. There is ring of peace. And then this new talent, peace and prosperity, which reduces the cooldown of ring of peace by five seconds. And the song of Chi-Gi's cast time is reduced by 0.5 seconds. So that is interesting. I have noticed that I've been using song of Chi-Gi a lot more just because of that reduced cast time, which I think is amazing. Uh, we get our defensive. So diffuse magic reduces magic damage you take by 60% for six seconds. And it transfers all current harmful effects back to the original cast there when i was talking about outplaying on a mistweaver this single-handedly makes mistweaver you can do so many amazing things with this button and i've done it and i will i will share with you what you can do with this get your fort brew this increases your maximum health and reduces the damage you take you can also make it shorter with exped expeditious fortification they, they some long words for these talents get your statue and then down here there's actually some interesting new talents which is great save them all so they made this a one point talent so when you heal somebody below 35 percent health your healings increase by 10 percent, which is fantastic chi proficiency so this makes magical damage done increased by four percent and healing done increased by four percent it buffs Crackling Jade Lightning by 10%. It's nothing crazy, but it increases your healing by 4%, which is great. You get Healing Winds. So this makes it so Transcendence Transfer immediately heals you for 10% of your max health. And this can be paired with Escape from Reality as well. Flow of Chi. This is a new talent. You gain a bonus based on your current health. So above 90% health, your movement speed is increased to between 90 and 35% health. You take 5% reduced damage. And then when you're below 35% health, your healing is increased by 10%. So that is really, really nice. It also works with save them all. So they're both at 35%. It's amazing. And then you have lighter than air, which makes it so after you roll, you get like a little, you get a little dash, which I love. I, I love this. This is really helpful for when like you're slowed and you're trying to get CC. Let's just say you're trying to get a disc priest, but you're slowed. Boom. You dash and you get your CC. Let's just say you try to cheat torpedo and you're just you're just a little short of your chi torpedo, your dis distance to get away. You could dash, get away, get behind the pillar. So really versatile talent. I like it a lot. The biggest change you're gonna see between talents is Song of Chi G and Ring of Peace. I would play Song of Chi G if you're playing against a team that doesn't have many ranged interrupts. That's what I would play it, or they can't punish you for pushing in a little bit. I would play Song of Chi G. I do want to give any flex talents there are, though. There aren't too many. I do swap between Healing Winds and Bounce Back. If I do think that the team is going to be mostly focusing me, I'll use my Bounce Back. And then Healing Winds is just a nice little free heal to have um, for when you pour it. Outside of that, I don't change anything too much. I think everything pretty much has a spot. I mean, if you really want, if you don't plan on pushing in ever, you can, dot, you can drop Tiger Tail Sweep and put it somewhere else if you want more defensives you can go here if you want a little more distance you can go here but there really aren't too many other talents next up we got mistweaver talent so this is exciting 
Not much has changed though. So I'm going to go over some major talents that you're going to be playing, but not much has changed. So obviously you can go for Envelope and Miss. This is your main hot. Don't have Focus T. I will talk about all these buttons, by the way, later in the video. Life Cocoon, which is your major cooldown. And then you have Common Coalescence. Every time you use Soothing Mist, let me drop these stacks. Every time you use Soothing Mist, you get a stack of Common Coalescence that increases the absorption shield of your Life Cocoon up to 50 stacks, which is amazing. Mist of Life. And then you have Chrysalis that reduces the cooldown of Life Cocoon, which is amazing. Revival is your next major spell or your next major cooldown. And the, I just want to note that these two have different uses. Most of the time, I actually am playing Restoral and not Revival. The only time I play Revival is versus Affliction Warlocks, Shadow Priest, and Ellie Shaman because Revival dispels most of the harmful magic effects. So if you're not playing into one of those three specs, I would recommend playing Restoral. It's just too good to use, be able to use it while stunned. Invigorating Mist. So this makes it so Vivify heals all targets with Renewing Mist on them. What that means is if you have Renewing Mist on people, let me see if I have Renewing Mist, and I Vivify myself, this person gets healed for a part of the Vivify. So that is a very crucial part of Mist Weaver that you want to keep in mind. It also, if I have Renewing Mist on them and I and I Vivify, it double dips and Vivifies them and it heals them for the initial heal and then also that little spread heal there. So keep that in mind. It's very important. And then this is a very exciting change right here. Zen Pulse and Deep Clarity. So this is exciting. We got a complete rework on Zen Pulse. It used to do damage. It doesn't do that anymore. So Renewing Mist Heal over time is a chance to cause your next Vivify to also trigger a Zen Pulse on its target and all allies with Renewing Mist. Healing them for X amount increased by 6% for each Renewing Mist on them up to 30%. And then Deep Clarity makes it so after you fully consume a Thunder Focus T, your next Vivify triggers Zen Pulse, which is amazing. So if I Thunder Focus T and then I use it all, let me just use all my Thunder Focus T, I get a Zen Pulse proc. So it's right here. And my next Vivify will trigger a Zen Pulse. So let me just make sure I get Renewing Mist on everybody. And then I Vivify and look at that. That is insane. So you do the Vivify healing and the Zen Pulse healing. It is, it is actually a so much healing i love this talent that means i only put one point into rapid diffusion but that's fine yulon another major cooldown this just makes it so you summon yulon most importantly is she makes your envelopment mist cost 50 percent less mana and when you use envelopment mist you put this envelopment breath hot that makes them take 10 percent increased healing from you so it's a lot of modifiers that you need to keep track of peer into peace is probably the most important talent in here i cannot believe they added this in like the last season of dragonflight but this is the most important talent what it does is you soothing mist and you heal and then your soothing mist will follow whoever you vivify so i'm not so i'm not repressing soothing mist i'm just pressing my vivifying rope mist and it follows so saves a ton of globals this makes it so yulon is a one-way cooldown resplendent mist increases you have a 30 percent chance to do 150 percent more healing with your mastery and then this is actually t of serenity and then over here so it looks weird but on beta and on live currently as of recording this i cannot change my talents because of healing elixir i don't know why they swapped these two and i cannot drop my healing elixir so this is the build i would be running as my cast of miss weaver so come down here focus thunder peaceful mending and i get sphere of mourning and then shaylin's gift and shaha's lessons you I would highly recommend I test this build. I think this build, by the way, that I've made here is the best build that you can make for Caster Mistweaver, hands down. So I just want to let you know that before we to go ahead. And then there's one flex talent. I would say you could probably go many pro proliferation if you want to. It helps with like spread healing. So if you're running into a lot of affliction warlocks and ferals that or anything that has spread damage, you could probably drop one of these talents. You could probably drop like Shadow's Lessons and go here. But Shallow's Lessons is really good uh, when paired with, with Shaylin's Gift. So this is my build. I do drop Healing Elixirs. If you want the extra defensive, what you could do, and let's just say if you're going to get tunneled down or you are going to queue into like some spread damage and they have range kicks, drop Shaylin's Gift and go Healing Elixir and Many Proliferation. This will help with your spread healing. You won't have to worry that, that much about interrupts because Shaylin's Gift is a long cast time. 1.8 seconds is so long. You won't get any value out of Heart of Jade Serpent, which I'll talk about, but that's okay because you get the extra defensives, which is great. So I would say in general, use this build. Use the other build if you're running into a lot of range interrupts or if you're going to get tunneled down. And the newest addition with War Within are Hero Talents. And I have done extensive testing on Hero Talents. I have played both builds about 200 rounds each, trying to pick which one is the best Hero Talent. And by far the best Hero Talent is Conduit of the Celestials. I knew it from the start. 
I wanted to give Master of Harmony a chance, and I did give it a really good chance. It just doesn't come close. The reason for that is simply because of this button right here. Celestial Conduit. Well, first of all, all of these procs are insane. The, this hero talent is perfection. I, quite literally, everything just weaves. This this hero talent is the definition of, of Mist Weaver. You, it just weaves together all these procs and all your talents, and it's amazing. So I want to start off by going over the button that you get so celestial conduit minute and a half cooldown summons all the celestials which i'll talk about all the celestial procs in a minute and it heals so much it does a ton of aoe healing it does decent damage but it does a ton of aoe healing and it heals uh more for each person it heals so in arena you don't get full value out of it as like you would in rbgs or rage or something but you, it still does a ton of healing and you could use it while moving and just to show you let me give you maybe a healing breakdown of my spells right here. So this is a perfect example. This is my number three heal. So this was a, how long was this game? This was a three minute shuffle. I used this button two times this game and it was my number three heal. So if, if that's not enough evidence, I don't know what else is. This is an insane, it's insane hero talent. This is also one of our talents right here. So just this, I love this tree. So let's just start off with temple training, the healing of enveloped mist and vivify is increased by 6%. Pretty good. Courage of the White Tiger. So this makes it so Tiger Palm and Vivify have a chance to cause Zhuen to deal damage and heal for the 200% of the damage it deals. And then Invoke, Chi Ji, and Yulon have a chance to proc him more. So let me show you. So Vivify and Tiger Palm have a chance to proc Zhuen. So I'm going to use Yulon here. I proc a Courage of the White Tiger. So if I use my Vivify, you're going to see Zhuen hit this and then he heals somebody. And more importantly, this next proc happens, Strength of Black Ops. So after Zhuen assists somebody, your next Envelope Mist cast time is reduced by 50% and puts a 3% shield on people for your max health. So I was min-maxing this. Because this is 3% of your max health, you can combine this with Emblem right here to increase your health to make the Absorption Shield bigger. So I press the Envelope Mist, boom, the shield should cost, I don't know, where did my shield go? It went to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's about 200 oh, right here it's 188,000. so i try to just min max it i use emblem it, don't use it don't do that i was trying to min max it it's not good because you lose out on a lot of haste from your trinket so do, do not do that but i was just saying you could min max if you wanted to but yeah though that's uh courage of the white tiger restore balance so you gain refreshing jade wind while chi ji or yulon is active it's not insane it's some aoe healing it's it's not crazy it's also not worth picking up um refreshing jade win i think refreshing jade win is here but you really want mist wrap for the extra healing from about mist so the other talent isn't worth it heart of the jade serpent so this i'm not a fan of being forced to play a talent because you lose out on flexibility however they get a pass because this talent is really good so consuming 10 stacks of shaylin's gift calls upon yulon to decrease the the to decrease the cooldown rate of renewing mist and rising sun kick life cocoon and thunder focus by 75 percent so if i get this is why i'm running shaylun's gift in the primary build because you do want to get value out of your shaylun's gift um and your your yulon so i could try my best to get 10 stacks and i'll show you what it looks like ideally what you want to do and pay attention to and this is why you're going to be weaving and you pay attention there's a lot of min max you can do on mist weaver is it reduces the cooldown of life cocoon right so and your thunder focus t so ideally what you want to min max is you want to make sure you're using your thunder focus t make sure it's off cooldown and then same with life cocoon you want to make sure you life cocoon don't just do it on a whim like don't like yolo it right you don't just for the cooldown reduction but ideally you do make sure that you use it uh before you get your 10 stacks of shaylin's gift and then as soon as you get 10 stacks of shaylin's gift i'm at nine right now you're going to get you're going to instantly get the buff and by the way i have a weak order for all of this it's in the description so i have 10 stacks of shaylin's gift i press it and then i should get a ulon so my the cooldown rate is increased by 75 percent for my life crew and everything you see it just ticking away faster my thunder focus t as well so you, you i would i what i will be doing is i will be min maxing that buff because there are games and there are shuffles where you know life cocoon is right there you know like usually usually you only get one, you get like two life cocoons around but it's like right there you might be able to get a third you might be able to squeeze out a third if you're able to min max your shaylin's gift stacks even if you just even if you just port behind a pillar and you're scared of getting kicked port behind a pillar and shaylin's gift yourself just to get some stacks going even though it's not ideal to heal like that it's still better than wasting your stacks so this is a really good talent that's the reason why i have shaylin's gift here and obviously i want to play shadows lessons for the buff that you get from it 
I talked about Black Alex. Uh, Flight of the Red Crane, you're not going to be seeing her that often. So refreshing Jade Wind and Spinning Crane Kick have a chance to cause Chi-Gi to dash at somebody and give you a manatee stack, which is amazing. But you don't play, we don't play refreshing Jade Wind and you're not Spinning Crane Kicking that much in Arena. So you're not going to see Chi-Gi that often, sadly. Uh, I think it's a good talent though. This one right here. So this this one's activated Jade Fire Stomp. So we're not going to be Fist Weaving. Inner Compass. This makes it so every time you summon a Celestial, you get, it rotates on certain stats. So you have Haste, Crit, Verse, Mastery. It looks like I have the Mastery from serpent stance but if i were to proc let's just use chi and use this so now it, it should change yep so now i have the crane stance which increases haze so it just it just rotates every time you use a celestial so now it's versatility it's really nice it's a nice little stat bonus two percent stats i'm not going to complain about it chi swiftness so your movement speed is increased by 75 percent during celestial conduit and by 15 percent for three seconds after being assisted by any celestial movement speed is great i'm not going to complain about it and then this one you could kind of do whatever you want, really. Nyuzu's protection, fortifying brew, grants you an absorption shield, 25% of your max health. So you four brew, you get a 1.6 million shield. <laughs> so, and this is on a minute and a half cooldown. Or you have Jade Sanctuary, you heal for 10% of your max health when you press Celestial Conduit, and you receive 15% less damage for its duration. And then this affects for eight seconds after. So this is a, essentially a second wall, and I'll show you after I press Celestial Conduit. And so you can rotate between four Pru and Celestial Conduit. The good thing about this is you can press your Celestial Conduit and then cancel it if you have to and summon all the Celestials and still get the the um, the damage reduction from this, which is great. And then Unity Within, I don't, I have personally not done much of it, use this that often, but what it does is when you press, when you use Celestial Conduit, you can press it again and cancel it and summon all, all the Celestials instead of having to wait out the heal. I've never had a use for it. I normally just press Celestial Conduit and heal, but yeah, so this is Celestial Conduit here. It does a ton of healing. The damage is okay. Similar to using your stacks of Shailun's Gift, I would, Ideally, I now talk about cooldown rotation. I would ideally use Celestial Conduit after you use Life Cocoon because it does summon Yulon. So keep that in mind. But those are the hero talents. I, if you want me to go over Master of Harmony in some video, I absolutely can. But for right now, I do believe that the Conduit of the Celestials is the best hero talents for Miss Weaver. All right, PvP talents. Miss Weaver suffers from success when it comes to. PvP talents because they're so good. So I'm gonna give you the ones that I play the most often and just the situation I play them in. Peace Weaver is pretty much played every game. You can actually lock in Peace Weaver. This is the number one PvP talent. This makes it so it reduces the cooldown of your revival or restore by 50% and then makes everyone who healed by it immune to magical effects for two seconds, which is great. So you could use this for affliction warlocks to dispel and not die. Anything. You can immune Cyclone, immune Polys, everything. So keep that in mind. This is a really important talent. The next two really depend on what you're hearing into. There's really nothing else to it. If you're playing into something with, you know, spammable dots, I'll normally play Counteract Magic, which makes it so when you remove a magic debuff, you get the your whoever you dispel it on gets a 10% healing increase, stacking up to three times, which is great. And then if I'm playing it, let's just play, say I'm playing against Shadow Priest, I'll normally play something like this with zen spheres so if you put sphere of hope on somebody they take 15 percent increased healing if you put it on an enemy they take increased damage and do 10 percent less damage to you but if they're paired with like a warrior i'll use grapple weapon grapple weapon is really important into melee like warriors even like demon hunters they can dispel it but still it's too good into that rep pallies dk's anything like that eminence if you feel like you're gonna get tunneled down i would play eminence if you're playing against anything with double caster with the range kicks zen Zen's Focus T makes you immune to silence and interrupt effects. This is important. And let's just say you're playing against Shadow Priest, like Shadow Priest, Demo Warlock, right? So you could theoretically, they don't really have a kick. They have a silence, but you could play Counteract Magic. And like, again, Zen Sphere is really important. And Zen Focus T if you want to be safe, or if you think you're going to get stunned and get CC'd in. Eminence is really important. So it's really just a rotation of those talents. There's really no other. There is a new talent for Celestial Conduit that makes it so your it prevents in caps, disorients, snoots, uh, <laughs> snoots, snare, and root effects for its duration, which is decent. But I've tested. I don't know what in cap and disorient they're talking about <laughs> because I've tested on every single one and I've gone in cap and disoriented during it. So I don't know. I think that 
it's a decent PvP talent, but I just think that I would rather take Zen Sphere, Zen Focus T, Disarm over that. I always assume that if you're watching this video, maybe you haven't played Mist for that long, or you have and you just want to get a brush up on. So I will go over the healing spells that Miss Weaver has and just kind of talk about it first. So expel harm. This is just a heal for you. That's it. It's just a little little baby heal. It's basically what healing looks are used to be, uh, which is nice. So you just use that on yourself. It's a you know, you got some talents that buff it, which is nice. Soothing mist. So this is your main heal, and this makes it so envelop mist and vivifies instant. I have seen some confusion about soothing mist. So I'm gonna just gonna explain it. Enveloping mist and vivify have a cast time so if i press vivify here it has a cast time if i press enveloping mist here it has a cast time but if i soothing mist i can use enveloping mist and vivify instantly with it so that hopefully that clears up any confusion i i know it's confusing for like newer players or anyone that might be new to the spec but yeah you're gonna you're gonna be using, using soothing mist with your healing spells to make them instant, which is amazing. And then Vivify, just, I just spoke about, this is your main single target heal, but remember it heals anybody that has Renewing Mist on them, which I will explain Renewing Mist in a second, right here. So Renewing Mist has two parts to it, okay? One, you always wanna make sure you keep Renewing Mist on people for that Vivify spread heal, but there's also this talent right here called Chi Harmony. So this makes it so in PVP, the first eight seconds of Renewing Mist, your target takes 25% increased healing from you. So let me show you. Put Renewing Mist on myself. They're going to take 25% increased healing from me. And then after eight seconds, this icon is going to look different. It's going to look like what Renewing Mist, there it is. So it's not as shiny. It's a different icon because they're no longer getting 25% increased healing from me. So you want to always, 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 you have two charges of Renewing Mist. Prioritize Renewing Mist always it is your most important heal i know that the, on the healing breakdowns it doesn't look like it i promise it, i know it doesn't but it it's really important i know it's all the way down here but it, it's what allows the vi to heal for so much and allows you to do so much healing and I'm, you have so many modifiers i'm going to talk about your modifiers so keep that in mind so that is your chi harmony and that is also important and you have your statue that you summon, which is great. It doesn't do too much. I talked about Celestial Conduit, Renewing Mist, Invoke Yulon, and then your Mastery. All right, so this is our Mastery. So what this is, is Renewing Mist, Envelop Mist, Rising Sun Kick, Expel Harm, Restore Shadow's Gift, and Vivify, cause a gust of mist, instantly healing. So it's a second heal. It, it basically, anytime you heal, you get a second heal. And then because I'm playing Resplendent Mist, um, Master, your Gust of Mist has a 30% chance to do 150% more healing. So that's why I stack Mastery. So I'm going to try to show you. Um, Renewing Mist. Vivify. You, get, you can see how I get a little heal. So let me see if it's in the combat log here. Right here. So it's a lot easier to see in the combat log. So Gust of Mist right here is my Mastery. So if I just press... I wish I could cancel that, 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 that Renewing Mist. So if I just... Renewing Mist here. Gust of Mist. It's literally a second heal that you do whenever you use any of your major healing buttons. That's it. It's really great. That's why I play it. I think it's a fantastic mastery. And that is pretty much it for our healing spells. Uh, those are the key things that you want to pay attention to when you're casting on your Mistweaver. I'm, I'm going to try to do this in parts. So I'm just going to talk about the basic healing rotation first. You want to start off by putting your, your Zen Sphere on your target. So they take 15% increased healing from you, right? And then you're gonna to want to start out. You want the next thing you want to do is you want to put your, your renewing mist out. So now they take 25% increased healing from you. And then I'll normally weave in an instant vivify if I have to, because vivacious vivification makes it instant. Refresh my renewing mist. And then if they start dying, I'll use my envelop mist. I got an Iusu proc there, so they should be getting a shield, which is great. And then I'll just use my vivify. Now if they really start dying, I'll weave in thunder focus T. And I've mentioned thunder focus T a few times, but so I want to talk about it before I talk about our rotation but that's the basic rotation put your zen spheres up use your renewing mist vivify if people are dying and then envelop mist if people are really dying thunder focus t empowers two spells and it empowers two spells because we use the talent focus thunder and this makes it so it empowers two spells so what it does is it does certain things for certain spells so if you thunder focus t enveloping mist it makes it so your enveloping mist is instant and it heals for a certain amount of damage. And it's instant, not with Soothing Mist, right? Because Envelop Mist has a cast time. But if you Thunder Focus T, you can use Envelop Mist without having to use Soothing Mist, and it's still instant, which is fantastic. Great addition in Dragonflight. Renewing Mist duration increased by 10 seconds. I use it sometimes. Sometimes at the start of an arena, I will use a um, you know Thunder Focus T 
renewing mist just to get extended hots out, uh, which is great. Vivify costs no mana. That's really important. Rising Sun Kit, cooldown reduce, not really too much. And then Expel Harm transfers 25% additional healing to damage and creates a Chica Kunum's only 1.1 million. So you're going to use Thunder Focus to Expel Harm if you're being trained down or if you're taking damage and there's interrupts and you don't want to do it. You can Thunder Focus to Expel Harm. One, you get a big chica cocoon and it heals for you, which is great. But for the most part, you're going to be using your Thunder Focus Heat on Envelop Mist and Vivify, depending on the situation. 90% of the time, 90 is too high. 70% of the time, you, you're you going to be using Thunder Focus T on your Vivify, so it costs no mana. That's pretty much it. You really want to make sure that you're not running out of mana. It's very important. Mistweaver still, if you make any mistakes, your rotation, if you envelop a mist too much, because it does cost a lot of mana, you're gonna you're gonna run out of mana. So I try to use my Thunder Focus T with Vivifies, but there are situations where you're gonna, you know, that little 30, maybe 40%, you're gonna be using Thunder Focus T for Envelop Mist. And you use that when one, if there's interrupts around you. You and you know you need to get some healing out normally because remember our mastery has a healing and I'll have a section for this but you you start to focus the enveloping mist and then you try to you know you have an instant vivify and you get your renewing mist out then maybe I would go for thunder focus the enveloping mist if someone's really dying or if there's interrupts available if there are interrupts available like let's just say for example you're queuing into a double melee team and they don't have any range kicks right it's like ret one walker or something and you're playing forty yards away. You have, you know, no reason to press Thunder Focus and then into an Envelop Mist. But if someone's dying and you need to get that extra heal, then yeah, you could use your Soothing Mist into a Thunder Focus and Envelop Mist just for that extra healing. It doesn't really matter, I guess, but it just helps with the extra global. And then obviously you want to use it for Vivify because it costs no mana. So let me go over that rotation just to put it all together with Thunder Focus T. So if let's just say someone's dying, right? Someone Someone's taking some damage. Always make sure you get your Zen Sphere out. That is 15% free healing. Make sure you get your renewing mist out. And then you're going to Thunder Focus T, Vivify. If they're just, you you know, you don't want to spend mana. Or you can Thunder Focus T, Enveloping Mist. You can see I got an extra Thunder Focus T charge from my T of Serenity. That empowers two additional spells. So on top of Thunder Focus T, which has two spells that you can control, you have your T of Serenity, which is two random spells between Renewing Mist, Enveloping Mist, or Vivify. And there's a chance for it to have two charges of the same one so i'm gonna use my thunder focus the enveloping mist here into a vivify so it just depends on the situation that's the beauty of healing and just mistweaver in general is there's so many different things that you can do that just depends on the situation that is just fantastic you see i have 10 stacks of shaylin's gifts so you obviously want to weave that in your rotation when you weave in your zen spheres and your Thund thunder focus t is going to look something like this you're going to put your zen sphere out on 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 your target right you're going to get your, your Renewing Mist out. You're going to Thunder Focus T. I got two Renewing Mist and two charges of Thunder Focus T. And if they're dying, you're going to use Envelop Mist. If they're not, use on a Vivify. And then because I have two of Renewing Mist, you could just kind of use your Renewing Mist. And then you're going to probably weave in your Shaylin's Gift with uh, the Zen Sphere and your Chi Harmony up because you want that extra healing. And that's pretty much, that's the rotation. I, there's It seems complicated, but it's really not. You're just kind of just trying to stack your modifiers as much as you can, as often as you can. That way you can get as much value out of them as you can. And this is why they call us Mistweavers, because again, we want to weave in now our manatees. So we have our basic healing rotation down. We have weaved in our Thunder Focus T, and now we want our manatee. So what manatee does is it, you, whenever you spend mana, you gain stacks of mana tea. And when you consume your mana tea, you get mana back and you reduce the cooldown of your spells by 30% for one stack for each stack you. So I have 20 stacks of mana tea. If I drank them all right now, I would have 20 seconds of 30% mana reduction on my spells. And you obviously, you never want to get to 20 stacks. You want to get to mid about five stacks is what you want to do as your cutoff obviously it depends on the situation if you just come out of crowd control you won't be in cc so you can actually manatee longer but if you're about to get put in cc you probably want to get like three or four stacks so ideally this is what i do you always want to manatee before you start healing you kind of need to be able you need to be able to predict how much damage your team is going to be taking because again, like I mentioned, Envelop Mist costs a ton, 105,000 mana compared to Vivify 75,000. So you cannot spam Envelop Mist. You will run out of mana. So what I'll do is I'll Manatee a few stacks, and then that's when, and then I'll continue my rotation. Ideally, you you do have your Zen Sphere out, but you you can Manatee into you know a, a 
Renewing Mist, and then that's when you want to use your Enveloping Mist. So pretty much I would Manatee whenever you feel like you're about to Enveloping Mist. That's what I do. So there's going to be situations where, you know, there's there's damage going out. I'll get my my big major, my healing out, and then I'll Thunder Focus the Enveloping Mist with a Manatee up. And that's that's your healing. And you see, I'm not using that much mana. I'm going to use my Enveloping Mist into, a uh, Vivify into Enveloping Mist. Boom. It hardly uses any mana. And you just do that every, anytime you get Manatee stacks. Again, I try to consume about you know, four or five at a time because you don't really have a whole lot of time in arena to react. So you do spend quite a bit of time consuming, you know, channeling that manatee. But the most important thing is before your rotation or before you envelop a mist, you always, always, always make sure you're trying to get one or two because you could you get one or two stacks and then envelop a mist, right? Like if you're in a dire situation and you need to get healing out now, like this second, what I will do is again, you hopefully you do have your sphere of hope up. And let's just say someone's just starting to die, right? Like they're just dying. I will I will use my Thunder Focus T with Manatee because Thunder Focus T isn't on the global or on the GCD. And you can manatee into a Thunder Focus T enveloping mist with one or two stacks. So I have two stacks of manatee, I'll show you. You can Thunder Focus T enveloping mist and just get the mana reduction. So I'll manatee, Thunder Focus T, enveloping mist, because you could use Thunder Focus T while channeling manatee. And then you can see I get the mana reduction. So maybe that was a lot. It's not too much. It's not crazy. I don't do that too often, but you can if you have to. And if you got tired of weaving in any spells, I hate to break it to you, but there's one more spell you need to weave into your rotation, and that is Yulon. So Yulon is a one minute cooldown. I know she, I said she was a major cooldown. She's kind of a major cooldown and a minor cooldown. She's a one minute cooldown, and she gets the job done. The most important thing about Yulon is she reduced the mana cost of my Enveloping Mist by 50%. Which is massive. So for, what, 12 seconds, you have 50% mana reduction on Enveloping Mist, and that stacks with Manatee, which is absolutely insane. So if you're going for major uh, mana reduction on your Enveloping Mist, because again, Enveloping Mist is your best heal. It costs a ton of mana, but it's your best heal, so you need to min-max your all of your healing with your mana reduction all at the same time. And this is, this is for me, this is the most fun part about Mistweaver because in in WoW in general, I always try to try hard. I'm a try hard. I will min-max my gear. I will min-max my stats. I will do it all. And Mistweaver, min-maxing your healing, your healing modifiers, your mana modifiers, being able to do that, that, oh, I, I love, I literally love it so much. So what I try to do is, Yulon is normally my, first cooldown I use in the game. I try to get a few stacks of Manatee. I always Manatee before I Yulon as well. So I'm at five stacks right now. And I'm, I'm just gonna show you, I'm not gonna do the rotation yet. I'm just gonna show you how much mana you can reduce uh, Enveloping Mist to. So I will Manatee into a Yulon and my Enveloping Mist now costs 36,000 mana down from 105,000 mana. And this is when this is when you need to make sure you get value. This is the one cooldown that you need to make sure if your goal is to dampen and you need to do as much healing as you can for as little mana as possible, Enveloping Mist is the cooldown to do it. Adding Yulon into rotation does, does not change much. When you Manatee and you have Yulon available, just press Yulon right after. So it's base, just take your basic rotation with your Thunder Focus rotation, with your Manatee rotation, and just throw Yulon in there. So I will always, always, always Manatee first because you don't want to waste any globals during Yulon. I will Manatee uh, Yulon. Make sure, obviously, you have your Sphere of Hope out and then get your Renewing Mist. And then that's it. That's the rotation. You just And then you just do everything else. Just make sure you get Enveloping Mist out for an Enveloping Breath. And look at this healing. Look at this. I love it. I, I literally, I love Mist Weaver so much. Look at this. And then you're going to get keep Renewing Mist out on as many people as possible. Look at that. Oh, my God. It is beautiful. I love it. And then after, and then obviously after that, you want to make sure that you're not spamming Velvet Mist. You don't want to spam Velvet Mist with Yulon up either, but just make sure you go a little easy on your Velvet Mist until you next Yulon or you get a few stacks of Manatee. Now I want to put all of the rotations together and just show you what it would look like if I was just peeling a normal shuffle or arena. So first thing, always put your statue down, right? Statue down. Put your Zen Sphere on whoever you think is going to be taking damage is normally the first thing I do. And from here, it's, again, it's going to depend on the situation. But if someone starts taking damage, I will always Manatee first. I have Yulon available, so I'll Yulon, Thunder Focus T, Soothing Mist, 
into a Vivify if they're not taking much, and Velt Mist if they are taking a lot. I should have a lot of mana reduction here, and I got a Zhuen proc there, so I got a shield as well. And you can just see I'm just spreading this healing. I get swapped between my teammates with my Velt Mist and Vivify, so I don't need to press my Soothing Mist. Get my keep my Renewing Mist up and active. Refresh my Chi Harmony if I have to as well. And then I have 10 stacks of Shaylin's Gift, so I'll go for a 10 stacker, and I should get Yulon. There's Yulon, so I get my Thunder Focus T back sooner. I get my Renewing Mist. Chi Harmony is up. Thunder Focus T, Soothing Mist. You could actually Soothing Mist and Thunder Focus T at the same time. But it's just off the GCD, so it's just easier to press. But if you want to, you can do that. And yeah, I got 7 stacks of Mana T again. So I'm going to press my Mana T. If someone's taking damage, I'll make sure I refresh my Zen Sphere. Chi Harmony into a Soothing Mist. Vivify, if they keep dying, I'm going to press my Velt Mist. They logged out my teammate all in forward. So I have to reset my Zen Sphere. Keep healing, keep healing. I got a Zhuen proc. So that means I have a Nyuzu proc here. I'm going to try to min-max this, this Nyuzu proc, by the way, here. I am going to Manatee it short into a Yulon, Thunder Focus E, Enveloping Mist. Everyone gets a shield here, Soothing Mist, keep healing. And this, this, is, this is it right here, baby. This is all of your healing that you can do, and I freaking love it. There's one more rotation I want to talk about before we move on. I know there's quite a few rotations. I, I'm just trying to build them up off each other in case anyone is not familiar with Mistweaver. And that is your instant healing rotation. And you're going to have to do this rotation a little bit in Arena and Shuffle because Soothing Mist is what makes everything instant. Okay, you're going to get kicked, but you don't want to get kicked. So you need to have situations where you don't cast at all. And I'm going to show you what I do. And hopefully this is helpful for anyone who might be running into issues or they're getting discouraged. Juking is one of the biggest things about mystery and positioning. It's hard to teach, but I would try my best. So your instant healing rotation. I spoke about it a little bit. You're renewing mist. Your mastery is the key to the healing rotation that makes all instant, right? Because whenever you use your renewing mist or vivify or enveloping mist, it also has your gust of, ma gust of mist mastery. So what I'll do, and this is when there's kicks available and I don't want to get interrupted or I don't want to go for a fake. What I'll do is I will use my Renewing Mist into an Instant Vivify. Remember, I also keep Sphere of Hope up. I have another Instant Vivify into a Yulon Thunder Focus Team Envelope Mist. If you don't have Yulon, it's fine. Just Thunder Focus Team Envelope Mist. And then just keep your Renewing Mist and Instant Vivify is going. That is your instant healing rotation. And you will do that if, you know, there's someone taking a lot of damage and there's interrupts available. And you if you get kicked, you lose and you're just you're desperate and you really don't want to go for it. You get kicked. That's what you do. If they're doing damage to you, you could also weave and expel harm to help you heal yourself. Cooldowns. So we Mistweaver has a few. We have a few cooldowns. Celestial Conduit being an, an extra addition is really nice. But I just want to talk about our major healing cooldowns and kind of the rotation or the order you want to do them at or, or what situations you want to do them in. So first off, talked about her a lot. Yulon, she is the first cooldown I use. Number one, I will press her as soon as anyone presses any button. I want to get her rolling. She has a one minute cooldown. The cool, the mana reduction is fantastic. So I just want to get her rolling, and I use Yulon nearly instantly i talked we just went into great depth about her rotation so she has a lot of healing a lot of mana reduction helps with all of that it is fantastic first button i press next up there's two other buttons you want to press you have life cocoon and you have revival slash restore so life cocoon big absorption shield you want to get a decent amount of stacks of common coalescence that way you can have a bigger absorption shield there's going to be situations where you don't get to 50 stacks one trick though is your statue your statue soothing mist helps with stacks of common coalescence. So if I drop these, let's just say, for example, let me drop my statue. If I soothing mist, I get one stack at a time. Where is it? One stack at a time. If I use my statue and we both soothing mist, I'm getting two stacks at a time. So statue helps with common coalescence stacks. That's a little trick. So keep that in mind. That will help you get them faster. So if there's a team or a shuffle round where the other team is behind the pillar just waiting, don't waste any time. Put your statue down and just start channeling Soothing Mist on somebody. So you're getting stacks of common coalescence. So when you do need it, you have actually a giant life cocoon. And then, oh, one more thing about life cocoon is this talent right here. Uh, Mist of Life. When you use life cocoon, it puts your doing Mist and, and develop Mist on the target. So it actually helps with your mana just a little bit. So if you're in Arena 2s, 3s, and you know you want or you know shuffle every night at all, it doesn't matter. And you're trying to be mana efficient, somebody uses a cooldown, don't try to heal through it. You know, if, if, a, if a monk pops Storm Earth and Fire or Fire Mage pops Combust and your teammate's at like 50% health, don't don't try to heal through it. Just press Life Cocoon and it 
helps with mana and it puts your hot up. So just do that. It's it's fine. You want to trade cooldowns. It's very important as a Mistweaver. Uh, the next one is Restoral slash Revival. So the major difference between Revival and Restoral is that Revival dispels three only three not all only three magical debuffs and restoral doesn't do that but you could use it while stunned so that's why restoral is normally my default choice and revivals only in niche situations versus affliction warlocks and ellies and shadow priests because being stunned as a misweaver your biggest it's it's your biggest weakness it's so painful any cc at all is awful but you can use this while stunned it works with peace weaver so you can immune cc if you're stunned uh, which is great I use this cooldown. If I'm playing against casters, what I'll do is I'll save it for their major cooldown. So Incarn from Boomies, Combustion from Fire Mages, Shadow Priests have that Void Torrent and all their Shadow Priests, Tentacle things. So any kind of major cooldown for casters, I'll trade Revival for. Against Melee, I'll try to, if you're playing against a Demon Hunter, you can actually immune the hunt with this because Peace Weaver makes people immune, immune to magic damage and effects, so you can immune it. But in, in general, I'll wait until I'm in stuns to use this one. So let's just say a Rep Alley hodges me. I will, if I'm stunned, I will use my Restoral if they use Wings or if like if they're playing with an Ardruid or a Shaman and they try to Hex or clone me, I'll try to use this to actually immune crowd control because you can immune magic CC. So. That's what I would use for Storo. And then the last one, which is a very fun button to press, is Celestial Conduit. And this is the last in the rotation because, again, it sh it does summon Yulon. So it, it gives you that cooldown reduction on your Life Cocoon, which is the big one. So I'll use my Yulon. I'll use my Thunder Focus T. I'll use my Life Cocoon. I'll use my Revival. And then I'll press my Celestial Conduit because that cooldown reduction from the Yulon is, is really important. And you can see the cooldown just start cranking away, which is great. And hopefully you can get a life cocoon. You'll get life cocoon faster, right? Which is amazing. So I tend to use Celestial Conduit last. It does a lot of AoE healing. So if you're in a, if you're playing against a comp with a lot of spread damage and you use your Yulon, you use your revival, and you have life cocoon and celestial conduit, but your team is mostly taking AoE damage. Yeah, it's inefficient, but I would just press Celestial Conduit. Don't trade an inefficient life cocoon if the better time to use Celestial Conduit is now. That, that's what I would say. Defensive cooldowns. So we talked about healing cooldowns. Let's talk about defensive cooldowns. The first major one, and this is the skill cap to Mistweaver, by the way. And this is, again, another reason why I love Mistweaver so much. Mobility and being able to kite is your biggest defensive in Arena. So what that means is you have Chi Torpedo. You have Tiger's Lust. You have your Lighter Than Air now. And you can dash around the Arena. And you also have your Port. So you have a lot of mobility. Do not waste it, please. You cannot waste it. Uh, you will be punished. Damage is fairly high, and you will you can still die in stuns. So just make sure that you are using your mobility efficiently. If you're going in for CC, that is fine. I would say don't use both chi torpedoes. If you if it, I if you're ever in a situation where you need to use both chi torpedoes to get CC. Hopefully the other team does not see that because the other team can swap too easily. As soon as you're out of mobility you're just stuck. You're just going to get stuck. So I normally I'll try to cheat torpedo and dash into like a leg sweep and then either you know, pour it out if you can, right? And then reset your port. Or if you can't do that, if you don't have port, I will dash out cheat torpedo again and dash out. Those are the two things I would do. Very rarely will I commit to cheat torpedoes to just get a leg sweep. And maybe it's if it's a game winner. But out if it's a, you know, you're in the middle of a round or an arena and you're trying to get CC and if it's against casters, that's fine. But the issue is versus casters. If you use both cheat torpedoes against CC, you're going to get CC. You're going to get stuck in CC because you have no way out. If you're playing against a melee team and you use both your cheat torpedoes, they're going to swap to you and you have no way to get out. So just try to do that. You could also use Tiger's Lust. So you could dash, go for like a sweep or an in cap and then maybe Tiger's Lust out and then cheat torpedo if you have it back up. But don't ever use your cheat, double cheat torpedo to get CC. And that's your major way to get, you know, CC. As far as other defensives, Fortifying Brew and Diffuse Magic are your two major defensives as well. So Diffuse Magic reduces magic damage you take by 60% and you can reverse any harmful effects. So Dots, you could use Oppressing Roar from Dragons. Anything like that reverses back to them. Unstable Affliction, Vampiric Touch, all that reverses back, which is fun. Fort Brew increases your maximum health by 20% and reduces all the damage you take by 20%. 
This makes it a minute and a half cooldown with this talent. And then also with Nyuzu's protection, you get a 1.6 1.6 million shield. So again, do not waste these cooldowns. Use it in situations where you feel like you need to. I, I've actually, in each situation, if you're playing against a Warlock, I use 4 for it. I dispel UA because you have an absorption shield and damage reduction. So I do that. This also... Technically, this also does buff your life cocoon and your Nyuzu's uh, protection, not Nyuzu's protection, the Nyuzu proc, Strength of the Black Ox, after you proc Age Wen, because it's based off your health, max health, right? Life cocoon is based off your max health, so is this. So theoretically, if you want bigger shields from from the, the Nyuzu proc, you could fort brew and then press it, but that's not ideal. But if you are in a situation where you're low and your teammates low, absolutely. And you have fort brew available and you're like late dampening in a shuffle round or an arena, fort brew life cocoon, baby. Do it. Press it. I mean, that's insane. Yeah, that's You get way bigger shield, way bigger life cocoon, and you, you keep yourself alive. So keep that in mind. Uh... That's pretty much it for defensives. You have your you have your port. You could use that obviously if you pair it with eminence, right? If you play it with eminence, you could use port raw stun. You can port and then all that. Boom. But that's pretty much it for your defensives. Mobility is your biggest one that you want to press before pretty much anything else. You always want to oh Zen Sphere. So this is actually a little thing that I feel like not a lot of people take advantage of, but I would. And that's that sphere of despair that you could put on an enemy. It makes it so they deal 10% less damage to you, right? So if you're in a twos game or a threes game and you have somebody just smashing you, just Sphere of Despair makes them immediately do 10% less damage to you. That's it. That's like, that's half of a four brew damage reduction. So keep that in mind. Try to take advantage of it. I try to, it's mostly, I use it in twos a lot because it's easier to just put on one person. Uh, in threes, I tend to swap depending on who my, my, my team. I basically, I try to maximize the damage that people take rather than damage reduction to me. But yeah, try to take advantage of that and it'll help. Uh, you'll you'll notice a difference for sure. 10% less damage is a lot. And that is pretty much it for defensives for Misphere. As far as comps go, you're going to want to stick with double caster or melee caster. The reason for this is because we are so reliant on our Soothing Mist. You can only heal one person at a time with your single target healing, like your Envelopment Mist. And Vivify, even though your Vivify does do cleave healing, it's not nearly enough to keep everybody alive. So you're going to want to stick to Double Caster. So Mage Lock, Shadow Play, which is Shadow Priest Warlock, Ellie, Ellie Boomy, Boomy, um, Boomy Shadow Priest, anything Double Caster, you're going to want to stick with. And then for Melee Caster, normally Demon Hunter Boomy is a really good comp. I like to play Thunder. And there's also a personal favorite of mine, which is Death Knight Warlock. So all of those comps work well. Just try to stick away from your double melee like Ret Warrior Turbo because you just cannot heal two targets taking damage at the same time. All right, and I want to talk about my macros that I think are really important for Arena. There aren't, the good thing about Mist Fever is there aren't a whole lot of mandatory macros that you need. Just some quality of life and nice to have one. So I have a Trinket 13 and 14. This doesn't actually matter that much just because you aren't changing trinkets that much, but just in case you are, 13 is this slot right here, 14 is the slot right here. Whatever trinket you put in these spots, it will change on your action bar. So if you find yourself, if you PvP and PvE maybe, or if you find yourself swapping between Emblem and like, you know, Insignia a lot, just put it on your bar, that's great. So I have Arena 1, 2, 3 Paralysis macros as well. This is just how I macro things, really. A lot of people use focus macros. I just I just like Arena 1, 2, 3. They just help me a lot. I like the flexibility of them. So that's what I do. There's really not too many. I have Grapple 1, 2, 3 as well. So oh, Grapple 1, 2, 3 is really important as well. Um, kick 1, 2, 3. Focus Kick. This is a taunt macro that will taunt or use your Provoke to taunt any kind of ads or any kind of pets to help break your cc life cocoon macro this oh i have a different life cocoon macro this one right here is probably i say this i've said this for like five years now i swear but this is the most impact important macro to have on the misweaver is this macro what this will do is this will only use life cocoon on your teammate that isn't dead so you will never accidentally life cocoon yourself if someone's mind controlled or if you if you RBG, this won't accidentally life cocoon you if you're targeting somebody that dies. None of that will ever happen again. Just use this macro and you will be fine. Outside of that, oh, there are kind of important macros down here. Dispel party one and two is really important as well. But I would say the most important macros, I think, or is this one right here? Is it this one? It's this one right here. So I came up with this macro. I think it's really important for Mistweavers to use this macro. It is a help harm 
target help harm Zen Spheres macro. So what this does is if your teammate is, if you're targeting your teammate and they're targeting an enemy, this will put your sphere of despair on them. If you're targeting an enemy, this will just use blackout kick. So this is really, really good. I would say I would 100% have the lowest uptime of Zen Spheres if I didn't have this macro. So that's really important. And then I do have some Tiger's Lust macros. Let me see. I think I should. Yeah, Tiger's Lust 1, 2, 3. I have a party 1, 2 for Tiger's Lust and then uh, Tiger's Lust myself because Tiger's Lust is actually very important for kiting. So you want to take advantage of, of your Tiger's Lust when you can. And I'm trying to think of anything. That's pretty much it for macros. I don't have too many other macros. That is pretty much it. Uh, stop casting is important for juking, but that is literally it for my macros. Thankfully, Miss Weaver doesn't need too many, but if you have any questions about macros or you want, you want me to make a macro for you, just let me know and I can probably do it. Next up is add-ons, and if you want my add-ons, all my settings are in a GitHub in the link below. You can have them. They are all yours. Trust me, they're all yours. Do whatever you want with them. I will go over some add-ons that I use for Arena. A lot of these are, listen, a lot of these are for pet battles, okay? There's a lot of battle pet. <laughs> There's a lot of battle pet add-ons. Uh, details just shows damage and healing. Diminish got fixed by Jayza, which is really nice. So this shows DRs on you and your teammates, which is really great. So if I do slash diminish and I toggle test, so it shows DRs on me. It'll show on any enemies. It'll show on my arena frames it'll show you can make it show on teammates too but i think that's like information overload so i don't have it enabled for my party members that's too much i show it on enemy nameplates and myself i think anything outside of that is kind of kind of too much easy frames is this right here is just my frame it doesn't really do much but it's it's nice it's nice to look at <laughs> frame sort so this makes it so i can always be on the bottom of my party frame at all times these are this is the settings i use Go in the bottom and then sort by group. That's pretty much it. I need tooltip. Leatrix Plus. This is a great just quality of life add-on that can do a lot of things. I don't use it too much, but it shows like you could hide key mind text and stuff like that. It's just nice for quality of life stuff. Mask is just for colors. Nameplate cooldown. So this shows, believe it or not, cooldowns on people's same plates but set the y coordinate to negative 40 if you want to underneath the nameplate try not to go overboard on this though because i watch some people and like it's in they track a lot of spells they track a lot of spells don't go too heavy on it just track major cooldowns this is pets on the auras this is currently my probably one of my favorite add-ons yeah I would, I would say one of my favorite add-ons so this just you could just do so much with it you can see um you could see buffs on raid frames you can see debuffs i actually have unit frames disabled you can see debuffs on nameplates so you could see like if a warlock walls or if i paralysis it'll show so this is really neat this is that's what shows this it's really nice so i would highly recommend this add-on very customizable I, you could do so much with it on the bar and on the cd so on the bar is what shows all of like the cooldowns on people. I only have, the only visibility I have is not this one. I only track interrupts with Omnibar. These other ones, I just test stuff out, but the only one that has visibility in Arena or that I use on a day-to-day -day is interrupts for this. Otherwise, it's just very overwhelming when it comes to like stuff, like stuff you're tracking and it's a little it's a little too much for me uh information overload is a thing in arena sometimes less is more so i try not to track too many things when it comes to that and then omni what's on the cd on the cd this tracks um this tracks your teammates cooldowns so this is really important i don't know if i could test it right now no test arena no but this will track this 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 will track your teammates cooldowns which i think is kind of really important to have uh and that's pretty much omni plater it's just my name plates it doesn't i mean it's nice you can have it but it doesn't help too much and that is pretty s arena so i spoke about this s arena this is my arena frames right here the gladius x gladius i use s arena i actually forgot that i want to get rid of the diminishing returns on this because diminish works now so yeah, I use I use S Arena. Really, really good. Really helpful. I just like how it looks. And then I would say finally is weak aura. So weak aura. Oh, shadow unit frames is simply just for this focus frame. It took me a very long time to figure out how to do this focus frame, but I did it. So this just shows the class color. It also only filters certain things. 
that I want. And then finally, weak auras. All my weak auras, again, are in the description below. It's just all this stuff. This just shows when cooldowns pop. I, there's This is the Mistweaver weak aura that I made. So if you want, you know, to track, if you want my weak auras, or if you want something like this, all these trackers, it's all yours. You can have it. Um, but then this one is the other major one that is really good for tracking buffs and, you know, um, burst and defensive cooldowns from enemy players. And that is pretty much it for add-ons that I use in Arena. Tips and tricks are a completely different video. I have a, what, 20 minute long video going over tips and tricks. I will put it in the description. I'll also have it linked somewhere in one of these corners. You go watch it. They are really good ones. I will make updated version of it for The War Within. But for right now, that one should be up today as well. Not much has changed from Dragonflight to War Within as far as cooldowns go. So take a look at that video. Really, really helpful. I got a lot of... A lot of good tricks and tips in there, and I'll make an updated version for the War Within. And that is it for the War Within Arena slash Solo Shuffle Guide. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. If anything gets changed, I will put it in the comments as well as a pinned comment. And that is it for me. Hopefully, this was helpful for anyone that is learning Mistweaver, wants to know about Mistweaver and the War Within. Please let me know. I'm more than happy. So that is it. Hope everyone's a fantastic rough day. Hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you later.